Good evening, everyone. Wow, if that doesn't get you pumped up, I don't know what will. How about another round of applause for tonight's Hakka War Dance performance, featuring youth from the Camp Unity Pacific Islanders Summer Youth Enrichment Program. You know, when Mary Lee announced the uh, Warriors were coming to San Francisco, I don't think he quite meant this group, but uh, it's good to see so many Asian Pacific Islander groups represented here tonight. If you didn't know, the, uh, the haka is a traditional dance originated from the Maori people of New Zealand and a unique part of this Pacific Islander ethnic tribe. It is an energetic dance designed for the battlefield and commonly known as a war dance. Today, the haka is performed at ceremonies and celebrations to honor guests and show the importance of the occasion. In fact, a number of groups use the haka dance to get themselves pumped up before a big performance. Some of those groups include the University of Hawaii football team, the BYU football team, and the ABC7 sports team. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Actually, the BYU team doesn't do that. Uh. But anyway, hey, tonight's performance, I'd like to remind you, is being taped live. And we would like to ask you to please turn off your cell phones during tonight's program. I know it's hard to do, but I know you can do it. So right now I'd like to bring out Christina Dunham and ask you to please stand as Christina performs the singing of the national anthem. Christina? Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light What so proudly we hail At the twilight's last gleaming Whose broad stripes and bright stars Through the perilous fight All the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets regular the bombs bursting in air gave proof to the night 
that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave for the land of the free and the You may now be seated. Thank you, Christina. Let me tell you a little bit about this uh, beautiful young woman. Professionally, Christina is responsible for content strategy and customer marketing campaigns for the newly launched tech startup in San Francisco called FitMob. She's also the lead singer for two San Francisco-based bands, Honey Circuit, an 80s cover band, and Rainbow Party, an experimental fusion of electronic dance music, rock, and pop. Well, welcome again, everyone, to tonight's program. My name is Rick Kwan. I am your master of ceremonies tonight. I'm really honored to be here. Um, when I first got here tonight, I was looking for Cindy Tong, one of the coordinators, and they said, oh, Cindy, yeah, she's next to the stage. She's the one with the uh, black hair and brown eyes. And I said, thanks a lot for that. But, <laughs> no, it does my heart good to see so many Asian American and Pacific Islander groups coming together tonight to celebrate Cinco de Mayo, but, <laughs> oh, sorry, wrong script there, sorry. Actually, it's the 10th annual Asian Pacific American Heritage Month celebration. Got that right. It's not on the teleprompter, I can't, anyway. This year's theme is Celebrating Innovations, which recognizes individuals within our San Francisco Bay Area's diverse Asian and Pacific Islander communities recognizing them for the impact and contributions they have made in their field as well as in our community. 36 years ago, President Jimmy Carter signed into law a resolution declaring one week in the month of May as Asian Pacific American Heritage Week, but we wanted more. So in 1990, the one week celebration was expanded to the entire month of May. And in 1991, legislation was signed into law making Asian Pacific American Heritage Month in May a permanent celebration in the United States. How about a round of applause for that? In 2005, Mayor Gavin Newsom enthusiastically supported the idea of an annual official celebration that would include all APA ethnic communities. In, here in San Francisco, where over one-third of the population is Asian American and Pacific Islander, we continue to show the nation how to properly celebrate Asian Pacific American Heritage Month. The planning of tonight's celebration, as well as the public awareness of campaign, are due to combined efforts of the Mayor's Asian Pacific American Heritage Celebration Committee. And now to speak on that committee's behalf, I'd like to, to uh, please welcome to the stage Claudine Chang, the founder and chair of the APA Heritage Foundation. Claudine. Thank you, Rick. Good evening. See the crowd that we have for celebrating Asian Pacific American Heritage Month. Thank you so much for taking time to join us for San Francisco's 10th celebration uh, of this national holiday, as we call it. It's very exciting. 10 years. We started in 2005. 10 years is a special time. And for those of us and many of us in this room who have been involved in putting these e events together through the years, it's a very significant milestone of a year. And it's about volunteers. And looking back, in 2005 when we started, there's 16 of us in this committee called the Asian Pacific American Heritage Celebration Committee. Today, I'm very proud to say that in 2014, we have 34 on our committee. It's really a coming together of volunteers in a committee we can do uh, without them having spent the last half a year planning the celebration, thinking how we can better promote awareness of Asian Pacific American Heritage Month uh, in the city. We also want to give thanks to all the volunteers, people on the committee, Al Perez, JJ Lara, Genevieve, all the volunteers, the 50, 60 some volunteers today that help make it happen. 
I think, uh, unfortunately, there's a glare on this screen, but um, the names uh, on your program book and uh, the committee members are the one with the flower lays on. Uh, please thank them. With the community, as you can see, an event like this requires a lot of professional services and specialized help and support to make this happen. So in your program book, we also have acknowledged all the professional services that have gone way beyond and above uh, what they thought that they were doing when they first joined us to make this happen. So thank you so much, and let's give a round of applause to our event team. So with the community behind us, the, com the, committee, the committee, the volunteers, the professional services, still something is missing. We really want to thank our sponsors. Throughout the evening, you will meet them. You'll see the names on the acknowledgement board. Rick Kwan is going to, uh, again, uh, acknowledge them one by one. But I just want to give thanks in this very 10th year to the top sponsors, as we call them, our heritage champions. And they are here with us this evening, the Academy of Art University, AT&T, Target, Wells Fargo, and U.S. Bank. Thank you so much. It is often said that it takes a village to make it happen. For many of us, the 30, 40, 50 of us, it takes a lot more than a village. Every year, we challenge ourselves to find new ways. How can we do a better celebration so the San Francisco event can be a role model for the cities across the country. Every year we challenge ourselves as to what are the new partnerships that we can put together so that we can continue to build and to strengthen the diverse families within the APA community. It's every year about challenging ourselves. That's what the theme of this year's celebration is, celebrating innovations. What does innovation mean? Innovation means that generating new ideas and turn the new ideas into positive change and progress in the right direction. That's about innovation. Innovation is not just about science and technology, although that's very important, but innovation is also about our city, our communities, and our lives every day. So in closing, I want to, on behalf of the committee, really honor and congratulate the three honorees that we have this evening. Please read more about them and greet them uh, during the reception. The three of them, uh, they're innovators, they're groundbreakers, and they are agents of change. They make progress, they make life better for everybody. So on behalf of the committee, thank you again for joining us for this 10th celebration. Enjoy your evening. Thank you. you want to introduce the yes. So um, I was reminded about the next on the program. <laughs> Thank you. So um, every year, um, the mayor of the city uh, proclaim May, May, the month of Asian Pacific American Heritage Month. Um, today happens to be uh, our mayor's day of, believe it or not. So uh, he sends his specialists. He might still walk into the door any time but the program continues. I'm, we are very, very proud and privileged to have the one mayor that have never missed one single celebration of, uh, if he's in town to be with us, Mayor Willie Brown. Uh, I'd like to ask him and, and, and Supervisor David Chu to come up to the stage and, and assist in the presentation of the proclamation of the city. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't think there's been an occasion when this event has taken place that I have not been a part of it. And I'm just delighted to continue that tradition and to be paired here tonight with the President of the Board of Supervisors on behalf of the city and county of San Francisco and Mayor Ed Lee is wonderful. You must know that is not his, just his day off. This is actually 
Ed Lee's 60th birthday, May 5th. 61. 61. 61. Well, he's been lying about his age all these years. Lied to me when I hired him. He said he was younger. Uh, and so to represent the city and county of San Francisco appropriately, it is the president of the San Francisco Board of Supervisors, Supervisor Xavier Chu. Thank you. I want to thank our honorary Asian American mayor, Willie Brown, for all that you've done for us. Thank you, Mayor Brown. And good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Asian American capital of the United States, if I may say so on behalf of San Francisco. And wow, this has turned out to be quite a party. I think this is the largest gathering I have ever seen for a kickoff of this month. Uh, and I want to thank you and congratulate you for that. And while I'm doing that, I'd like to invite up on the stage to join us for this ceremony. I'd like to invite up our assessor recorder, Carmen Chu, our public defender, Jeff Adachi, supervisor, Norman Yee. I think I saw supervisor Katie Tang here. And if there are any other Asian American officials, as well as the other Mayor Lee from Milbray, <laughs> Mayor Wayne Lee, come on up. We represent on stage, I think, less than half of the Asian American officials here in San Francisco. It is our honor to represent all of you. And on behalf of all of our Asian American officials, I can tell you, none of us would be on our stage but for the 160-year history of our diverse communities, but for the struggles, but for the triumphs, but for the successes that every single person in this room represents. And so on behalf of our elected officials, I want to thank you for your leadership, for what you have done for our city's history, for our city's present, and what we'll be doing in the 21st Asian American city of San Francisco. So thank you so much for being here. And yes, we are going to ask. Okay, we're about to sign the proclamation on behalf of the city. Mayor Brown. Thank you, Mayor Brown, for filling in. Uh, I understand you were catching the 4 o'clock showing of the amazing Spider-Man downstairs and just happened to be here. Perfect timing. <laughs> I love your movie reviews, by the way. I, I, I do. OK, for a second photo op, we'd also like to welcome and invite the consul generals from the following countries to join the mayor on stage. We have Masato Watanabe from Japan, Jaime Ramon Ascalon from the Philippines, Christopher Chung from Singapore, Nguyen Ba Hung from Vietnam, and who else? Let's see. Dongman Han from uh, Korea, Dung Fan Hua from uh, the Republic of China, Sabrina Chow, the Director of Hong Kong Trade and Economic Office. Did I leave out anybody? Any other council generals in the house? Yes, just one more. One more. From Indonesia. The council general from Indonesia we have. Oh. And our two co-chairs. Co oh, we have one more person coming up.
This is on this guy. I like this. Thank you, Claudine, for your vision and leadership in making this event a model for other cities to follow, and thank you, Mayor Brown. At this time, we'd like to acknowledge again the top-level sponsors for this year's 10th anniversary celebration and the representatives who are here this evening. First, we have the Academy of Art University represented by Academy President, Dr. Alyssa Stevens. Dr. Stevens? We have AT&T represented by Regional Vice President for External Affairs, Mark Blakeman. Mark? Go ahead and stand up so everybody can see you. We have standing room only in the back there. We have Target which you can find downstairs. <laughs> Next we have Wells Fargo Bank, represented by District Manager Derek Fong. Derek, please. And U.S. Bank, represented by Northern California Regional Manager Chris Deligans. Chris. Thank you all for being here and for being so generous with your sponsorships. Okay, as we mentioned before, tonight's event would not be possible without the generosity and commitment of our sponsors to the APA community. At this time, we want to acknowledge the sponsors at the heritage patrons level. And to start off with, we'll start with City View at Metreon. What a great venue for today's program. Don't you agree? We also have CVS, Pacific Gas and Electric, and Walgreens. At the heritage partners level, we have AARP, Japantown Merchants Association, Lennar Urban, Portsmouth Plaza Parking Corps, San Francisco Association of Realtors, and Southwest Airlines. At the Heritage Friends level, we have Cathay Bank, Day, our artwork design partners, EMW Partners, our website development partner, the consulting firm of Goodyear, Peterson, and Hayward, and Sugar Bowl Bakery. Last but not least, we're very appreciative of the support given by the professional and nonprofit community organizations for their sponsorship, and they include the Asian Firefighters Association, the San Francisco Asian Peace Officers Association, the CACA San Francisco Lodge, Coalition of Asian American Government Employees, Japantown Merchants Association, OCA San Francisco Bay Chapter, Pacific Asian American Women Bay Area Coalition, Portsmouth Plaza Garage Association, San Francisco Manila Sister City Committee, Mabuhai. San Francisco Taipei Sister City Committee. So how about a round of applause for all those sponsors. Thank you for making this possible. And now please welcome Kampiang Metri Davies of the, I hope I get this right, of the Gadung Kasturi Balinese Dance and Music Incorporated, here to perform an excerpt of an Indonesian royal palace dance titled Lagag Babang Saba. Please welcome Kampiang. Where are you? <laughs> Yeah. 
Thank you, Compiègne. Well, the, uh, <laughs> one of our very special guests has just arrived. I understand the birthday boy is now in the audience. There he is. <laughs> it's your birthday. We'll, we'll let you slide this time. <laughs> but Mayor Lee, why don't you please come up and share a few words with us on this special occasion. Mayor Ed Lee. Thank you, Rick. Well, it's, it's hard to be young like you, Rick. It just gets older. Welcome, everybody. 2014 Asian Pacific American Heritage Month. And I'm glad to be joining former Mayor Willie Brown, our board president, David Chu, and so many others of you. And of course, thank you to Claudine Chang for helping put this together yet again for many, many years. Appreciate it very much. Yeah, it gets harder for me to celebrate birthdays, but I thought that at least I would try to make an appearance here. This is an important part. In fact, I think, uh, as many of you know, I, I believe these are very important times for Asian Americans. We still have to work hard to get things done for our families and for our communities. And I want to thank all of the corporate sponsors that are here tonight, all of the elected officials uh, that are also here. I see Jeff Adachi or Public Defender, C. Carmen Chu, of course, our assessor, recorder, joined by so many commissioners of our different departments. I also see a lot of community agencies that continue to help improve lives of so many people. And hopefully, maybe this year, we work as hard as we can with our national leaders to get the reform for immigration. 
That's still what we need in this country. And we will continue, all of us, to speak out on that. I know that's something that unites us all, no matter where we came from. But the Asian American immigration story is still alive and well. And we still do what I've been trained for many years, and certainly what former Mayor Willie Brown taught me is that when we get to our places, we keep the door open for everybody else. And this is what we continue to do. So I wish you a great, happy month of heritage celebrations. Uh, continue to stand proud, but also continue to work with me to hard to make sure this city represents everybody and keeps the opportunities, uh, doors open for all. Thank you very much. Okay, it's now time that we honor the, uh, or hand out the Asian Pacific American Heritage Awards for this year, where we honor individuals who, through innovations, have made a distinct impact and contribution within a specific area or field. Specifically, the awards criteria includes the impact of the innovation and achievement, whether that achievement has resulted in opportunities for future generations, and the extent to which the individual has given back to the community. The APA Heritage Celebration Committee received a number of extremely worthy nominations this year, and making a decision, of course, is very hard, challenging. However, the committee is very confident that you'll all agree that tonight's three honorees deserve to be recognized for what they have achieved as a result of hard work, innovation, and passion, as well as the generosity of time and commitment that each is given in community service and contributions. At this time, I'd like to invite the 2014 co-chairs, Mary Nicely and Kisa Ocampo, to come up onto the stage and help present the awards. We'd also like to acknowledge at this time another important sponsor of this event, Southwest Airlines, who in the past few years has generously provided each of our honorees round trip tickets for two to anywhere in the United States. And very, very generous, Southwest Airlines. And at this time, we'd like to ask Kim Elsie, the Southwest Airlines People Department team leader, to join us on stage to help present the tickets to our honorees. OK, to also help us with the presentation today, we'd like to ask Wells Fargo Bank District uh, Manager Derek Fong to also come up on stage. We'll help to present the first award. Uh, Wells Fargo has been a supporter of this event since the start in 2005. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, tonight's first honoree, and Kisa, you're going to help me with this? Okay, you want you to come on. Tonight's first honoree of the Asian Pacific American Heritage, Heritage Awards is Dios, Dios, Diosdado. Diosdado Banatao. Leave it to the Filipino. <laughs> Dios dado panatao. Thank you. Why don't you say a few words about this person? Thank you, Rick. Diosdado Banatao is known for having pioneered the personal computer chipset and graphics acceleration architecture that continue to be two of the foundation technologies in every PC today. As an engineer, he is credited with having developed several key semiconductor technologies and is regarded as a Silicon Valley visionary. For his tireless efforts, Diosdado has been honored by many organizations, including the Asian Business League of San Francisco and KGO TV. He was a recipient of the prestigious Ellis Island Medal of Honor, which is awarded to exemplary United States citizens. A celebrated Filipino-American, Diosdado has also received many distinct recognitions in the Philippines, including being designated the country's first special envoy of science and technology. Ladies and gentlemen, our first honoree, Diosdado Banatao. Mayor, would you please do us the honor of joining us on stage as well for the photo op?
Okay, congratulations. Okay. Good afternoon. I would like to thank APA Heritage Foundation for this award. Um, I always find it uh, so gratifying when you get a, an award from your own community. This is my community. I am from the Philippines. Now, while we celebrate uh, our heritage, uh, it's really being proud of where we come from. And I, will, uh, I always look at it as we are proud simply because of the achievements of those before us. There's no other way that we can be proud of. If our previous generation didn't do well, what are we going to talk about? And so that, that this is what uh, being or honoring our heritage is all about. The past have done great things for us today. So I, also I look at it as a major responsibility for all of us, simply because what we are doing now and in the immediate future, the future of our heritage must be proud of what we do today. And that, that is really the meaning of the celebration of uh, the Asian Pacific heritage that we, we are part of today. I am proud to be a member of the community. Thank you. To help present the next award, please welcome AT&T Regional Vice President for External Affairs, Mark Blakeman. AT&T has been a sponsor of this community celebration for the past seven years. Mark is also currently chair of the APA Heritage Foundation. So tonight's second Asian Pacific American Heritage Award, this name I can pronounce, I think, but Mary, come on up here. <laughs> Mary's going to read the bio of tonight's uh, second award winner. The uh, second award winner for tonight is a, actually a good friend of mine, Jonathan Leong. Jonathan. <laughs> so over the years, Jonathan Leong has, commit, has committed much of his time to serving the community. Among his many successes, Jonathan has been most widely recognized for his distinct impact he has achieved in advancing solutions to help save the lives of Asian Pacific Americans who are infected by diseases that require stem cell transplants. In 1989, the National Bone Marrow Registry only had 123 Asian Americans uh, donors listed, and prospects for leukemia patients of finding compatible donors was virtually impossible. This compelled Jonathan to establish the Asian American Donor Program, a nonprofit organization dedicated to increasing the availability of bone marrow transplants for Asian Pacific Americans. Jonathan's vision and innovation, innovative approach in reaching out and educating potential donors have led to a steady increase in the Be the Match registry. Today, today there are over 800,000 Asian and Pacific Islander Americans registered donors in the United States. It's quite fantastic. A graduate of San Francisco State University, Jonathan began his career in commercial insurance and has owned many businesses. He has been a champion of small business, founding member of the National Council of Asian American Business Associations, and a delegate to the White House Small Business Conference. Jonathan, please join us. Congratulations. <laughs> Wow, who's heard of the Asian American Donor Program? Can I see a raise of hands? 
Fantastic. We've been around almost 25 years, and watch out for our 25th anniversary. The reason this organization started was for one purpose, and it hasn't changed, is to save lives. Now, we might have done it a little bit differently in terms of trying to go out there and market, because we believe in one thing. There's no such thing as an Asian. We can't, as we go out and recruit and look at you, we're not looking at Asians, we're looking at Koreans, Filipinos, Indonesians, Japanese, Chinese. We need to recruit to you as individuals, your culture, your heritage. We need to understand who you are and communicate our message to you that way, the way you would like it accepted. That's reason, one of the reasons why the donor program has been successful in increasing the numbers on a national registry. It's been successful where in the 25 years, we average 10 lives a year of family and individuals who had no hope because leukemia is just one of 50 cancer that can be affected by a bone marrow or stem cell transplant. So the solution is still there. We're still looking at the solution. The problem is that it is not there. So we still need you, the community, to, be, to step forward and be tested because there's so many of the diseases that require a transplant, which is DNA matching. DNA matching, you all watch CSI, Detective. Before, we used to draw up to four to five tubes of blood. Today, we take a little cotton swab, we swirl it around your cheeks, and we take your DNA. And you're on that registry until you're 61 years old. So if you know of any organizations, any individuals who would love to be part of a life-saving organization, that you can actually save a life, please help us. Now, this organization didn't start with just me. We have a fantastic staff and recruiters. Carol Gillespie is our executive director sitting right here. We have, I think, Ruby Law, T, and any, could, could raise the hands of the, I hate to say this in their back, but please, they're very cute, so it's easy to talk to these ladies. And that's why another reason why we are successful in recruiting. So the solution is not there, and you are the solution. Whether you're Indonesian, you're Japanese, you're Korean, there's sent ten, there tends to be the match that individual is going to probably look like you, probably like the same foods you eat. So if you understand that, now you know why we need to get as many of the community on the registry. Thank you very much. Can we take some photos? Okay. Jonathan had a very creative campaign for a while where some of his attractive female volunteers would hold signs saying, will you marrow me? I, 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 <laughs> very clever. I like that. Okay. Okay, moving on. Okay, tonight's third Asian Pacific American Heritage Award honoree is Grandmaster Seichi Tanaka. And we'd like to have Kisa Ocampo please come up and say a few words about Mr. Tanaka. Rick, you said that perfectly. <laughs> Thank you. I'm learning. Seiichi Tanaka has been recognized nationally and internationally for his contributions towards the preservation of Japanese traditions and culture through a very unique musical art form, taiko drumming. And as part of his innovative approach to achieve this goal, Seiichi established the world-renowned San Francisco Taiko Dojo, which has provided opportunities for over 10,000 men, women, and children of all walks of life to learn the art of taiko drumming. In addition to his innovative teaching methods, Seiichi has also been trailblazing in his approach to music and has collaborated in performances with musical luminaries such as Tony Bennett and Tito Puente. 
Among the many honors that Saichi has received was his naming by the National Endowment for the Art as a National Heritage Fellow for artistic excellence, authenticity, and contributions to his field. Please join me in welcoming Grandmaster Seichi Tanaka. Good evening. Uh, I rather play taiko instead of talking. Uh, <clears throat> taiko, uh, we just finished uh, Cherry Blossom Festival a couple, uh, two, three, two weeks ago. And uh, my taiko started at the Cherry Blossom Festival, 1968. So uh, that time, uh, taiko, Nobody know what is taiko. So I start, what is taiko? Then, and we had a big problem is, taiko make lots of noise. <laughs> so when I start myself, but a lot of people want to join, so we made a group. But uh, since we make such a noise, so we have to move the place to place for practice, so churches, Buddhist temple, and uh, Japan Center garage, all over the place. I really, really uh, appreciate the neighbor people, so much noise I made. <laughs> and uh, first, my wife and son, uh, very noisy husband and a noisy father. <laughs> so, since uh, when I started Taiko, uh, Taiko was kind of behind uh, other, compared to other culture, like uh, Judo, Karate, um, Sukiyaki. <laughs> no. All those already knows. So Taiko have to read um, very, very beginning. So that was a hard time. I have to explain what is taiko, what is taiko. So since 40 something years, been performing all over uh, United States and uh, Europe, Asia. Now I got this award. So this means uh, I cannot retire <laughs> taiko drumming. More uh, I have to pray so I can contribute to this community. And uh, actually, I performed Mr. Brown when he was a mayor at Fort Mason. <laughs> so I really, really appreciate this award. And so many people here, uh, I mean, not exactly what kind of award I received. But I really, really appreciate, then I do more uh, work so I can contribute to, for you. Thank you very much. Okay, again, congratulations, Master Tanaka, Jonathan Leong, and Diosdado Banatao for being this year's award winners. Mayor Lee? We'd like you to stay on the stage for just a little bit longer. And we'd like to invite his lovely wife, Anita Lee, to please also come and join us on stage for just a moment. If you could just stand. <laughs> I can't just sneak out? No, no, I know you're a busy man, but we need you to stick around for just a little bit longer. As we mentioned earlier, Mary Lee is celebrating his 39th birthday. So... <laughs> <laughs> so we have a little surprise for him. We have a birthday cake, so 
Gentlemen, come on out with the cake. Okay, we're going to light the candles, and uh, we're going to... No, there are actually two cakes here. Oh, okay. Uh, there are actually two cakes here. One is the mayor's birthday cake, and the other one is actually an anniversary cake uh, for uh, the APA Heritage Celebration Committee, and I'd like to ask Mayor Brown and Jeff Adachi and um, our officials here to help us uh, celebrate. So where's the cake cutter? Okay, we're gonna sing happy birthday too. Oh, yeah. I'm you? I'll go ahead and okay. give it a shot. <clears throat> okay, we're all gonna sing happy birthday to Mayor Lee, right? Okay, here we go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Mayor Lee. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Okay, blow them out. All right, congratulations. Oh, <laughs> those, trick, those trick candles, yes, that's right. Claudine, I told you not to use the trick candles. <laughs> okay, you got them. Okay, happy birthday, Mary Lee. Okay, yeah, one more round of applause. <clears throat> As we await the uh, finale of the cultural procession tonight, we have a few announcements to make. As part of the tradition for this annual celebration, the award ceremony is always followed by a reception featuring the best of what Asian and Pacific Islander cuisine has to offer, and tonight is no exception. I'm told there are nearly 20 restaurants and vendors offering a sumptuous spread of food and drinks for you to sample, and yes, they are free. Some of the uh, restaurants we have on tap tonight include Attic Restaurant, Beard Papa's, some great cream puffs there, uh, Dosa, Gerhard Michler, Fine European Desserts, Hana Zen, Le Soleil, Live Sushi, New Delhi, Peony Seafood Restaurant, San Francisco Candy Bar, Straits Restaurant, Sugar Bowl Bakery, Three Twins Ice Cream, Bruce Cost Ginger Ale, Classic Wines of California, Martel, and Vuko, Vuko Vodka. The reception is being held just outside on the same floor, and our volunteers will guide you to the reception area as you exit after the end of tonight's program. Please tell all of your friends that you can view tonight's entire ceremony on SFGov TV, that's cable channel 26, as well as on the APA Heritage Month Celebration website at www.apasf.org. We'd also like to remind everyone to check out Asian Week, uh, Asian Week Foundation's Asian Heritage Street Fair. That's coming up on Saturday, May 17th from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. That'll be in the Civic Center Little Saigon District. There will be wine, music, and lots of arts and crafts, something for everyone to enjoy there. Okay, on behalf of the APA Heritage Celebration Committee, we'd like to congratulate our Heritage Award uh, honorees. Also, we'd like to recognize the, all the volunteers, the planning committee, the supporting organizations, and of course, the sponsors who made tonight's celebration possible. Last but not least, thanks 
to all of you for showing up here tonight and being a part of celebrating APA Heritage Month in San Francisco and showing pride in our Asian and Pacific Islander culture and heritage. We look forward to seeing you again next year. Okay, right now we'd like to turn the program over to Rose Chung, who will introduce tonight's finale. Rose has been a member of the APA Celebration Committee since its start in 2005 and is the founder and organizer of the Miss Asian America pageant. Ms. Rose Chung. Thank you very much. We are very pleased to conclude the ceremony with the community cultural procession. I would like to acknowledge Lily Kai, uh, nationally renowned of Lily Kai Chinese Dance Company for choreographing the community cultural procession. And I also would like to thank all the volunteers in the community cultural procession. But before we do that, we need some muscle to remove this stage. And I know that our opening performers are actually here to help us move that. It actually weighs 200 or 300 pounds. I tried it earlier. But you know what? I've been doing the, um, I've been doing the community cultural procession for, I think, since the very beginning. And I tell you, I always have a heart attack because everyone's rushing over from work. And so I'm not sure if they're going to make it. And then finding all the community members to make it here, um, to come to the rehearsal and everything. But at the end, it always turns out to be so fabulous, especially because you show your support. So now that the desk is gone, we could welcome them. So I would like to invite up to the stage of the Lily Kai Dance Company, C1, Alex, and Fong Wong. Let's give them a round of applause.
and the reception begins. And I would like to ask the cultural possession folks to go back up to the stage again. We would like to take some pictures with our sponsors and Claudine and some important people. Thank you very much for joining us. And enjoy the reception.